What's up, you beautiful people? It's Harrison here, coming to you from the beautiful Boulder, Colorado on this lovely, sunny Saturday afternoon. Today, I'm gonna to be telling you guys the story of how I was committed to a mental hospital for 72 hours back in the month of September of 2022. I wanted to tell this story to give y'all something to expect if you're thinking about checking yourself into a mental hospital or if people have recommended that you go anything along those lines. Furthermore, I just wanted to end the stigma on it and talk openly about it because the thing is, there is sort of a stigma that persists in regards to going to the mental hospital. If people hear that, you know, you got committed to a mental hospital or a psych ward, they might start thinking of you as crazy or a menace to society or something like that. And I want to tell my story so that people know that that is not the case. The majority of people in the psych ward are there because they're harms to themselves. Most of the people there are really just living in so much agony that it brings them to a life or death sort of scenario in their lives. And in that sense, it's no different than going to a regular hospital for physical health because your mind is an organ of your body and sometimes that organ's health can suffer to the point where it ends up killing you. Um, it almost has for me many times. Um, so first of all, what got me committed to a psych ward? Um, I was committed to a psych ward due to suicidal tendencies. Um, I was just thinking about it so much. I had a plan. Um, I had written about like a 15 to 20 page note. I thought about where all my money was gonna go. I thought about who I needed to say goodbye to. I thought about who I needed to say sorry to. And it just got to a point where I spent so long fantasizing about taking my own life that it was like a full-time job and it was crippling. And it got to the point where it was either I need to tell somebody about this or I'm not gonna make it through the week. So I did, I told my therapist about sort of what was going through my head, what my plan was. Um, I told her the pills that I was gonna take. I told her the kind of bleach I was gonna drink and all that stuff. Um, and right after that, she said, you are actively suicidal. We need to commit you to a mental hospital. And so I went and I checked in and that was that I was committed to the psych ward of the Boulder Community Hospital, also known as De La Cava. When you first walk in, they're gonna send you to a holding room. This is a room they send you to before you're actually in the ward itself. This is really no different than the average emergency room. It's just a little kind of hallway of the hospital. At this point, I'm still in the, you know, main section of it, but I'm, they put me down on a hospital bed and they made me sit in that holding room for about probably four hours or so. Um, 
this is where I was talking to some of the nurses. They were getting information on me. They drew my blood. They got my vitals and all that other hospital stuff. They also call your family and they let them know where you are and this part was easily the scariest part of the experience for me um, because this is the point of no return. I know that kind of makes it sound very ominous. I don't want it to sound that way, but in my mind, it was a very pivotal moment in my life because a lot of the time, if you struggle with suicidal thoughts or trauma or anything along those lines, you're very used to doubting yourself and convincing yourself that you're faking everything for attention. And when I was in the hospital, that's when everything became real to me. It's like, okay, yes, these are the thoughts that I'm having on a daily basis. Yes, this is real. It's not all in my head. Um, and I was also affected a lot by the stigma surrounding mental hospitals and psych wards. I thought, okay, Harrison, you are in a psych ward, you're in a mental hospital, like you're fucking crazy. Um, everybody's gonna think you're crazy. Nobody's ever gonna talk to you again. Things like that. Like, I thought I was pretty much the Joker at that point. Like, um, I started pacing around the room nervously. I started hyperventilating. I could not sit still. I just felt so uncomfortable and nervous and threatened. Um, all of that stuff. A lot of this was sort of in my own mind though. Um, the nurses were, the nurses are always very caring. That might, you know, change depending on which hospital you're brought to. I mean, I'm sure there's some really bad nurses out there, but um, the nurses at the Boulder Community Hospital were very reassuring, very kind and very understanding. So that definitely sort of brought me down a little bit. Um, it just felt good to kind of like talk through what was going on in my head. Um, after the holding room, they wheelchair you out to a little like car, like a little kind of bus and this is when they drove me over to the psych ward itself. Um, they had me in a green gown, they had me in, you know, the grippy socks, you know, they take your shoes, they take your um, belt, anything that could possibly be used to harm yourself, um, they take away from you. So, no more shoes, no more belts, no more forks, no more pens. Um, they pretty much take everything except for um, like athletic shorts um, from you. So they drove me over to the psych ward and they escort me up into the main room where I met with another nurse and that nurse um, asked me all of those, you know, preliminary mental health questions. Do you have any thoughts of suicide, self-harm, thoughts of harming others? How are you feeling right now? And I just said I was feeling really anxious. I was starting to get lightheaded. I was feeling dizzy and 
it was a very stressful experience due to just the state of mind I was in at the time. Um, but after that, they got me some water and they give you a little water jug to carry around all the time. Um, it's about like, this one was about like maybe 32 ounces or so. So you really just fill it up like twice a day and just drink out of that throughout. And after that, they show you to your room where you have a notebook or you can journal and do all of your activities and such. In this psych ward, I did get a single. Um, I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Um, some psych wards, actually the majority of psych wards will have you share a room with a roommate. This one did not, um, which was very nice. After I met with the nurse, I was really just sort of waiting around, kind of getting used to the place, trying to reassure myself of what was happening. Um, this was the point where I sort of started to come, like calm down, because the thing is, the psych ward is a much more welcoming place than the holding rooms, in my opinion, at least. Um, because, yeah, the holding room was really dingy. There was um, just white walls, you know, people screaming all the time and, um, there was like feces on the walls and things like that. So it was a very kind of intimidating place to be. Um, the psych ward itself was a very different story. Um, once you're in your room in the psych ward is when you really start to calm down because you know, you finally have you know, some space of your own that you can keep locked and all that, or, you know, not locked. I mean, they have to perform checks, but still like you have kind of a more private space. So that's really nice. Um, so I was just sort of focusing on calming down and getting settled into my room. And it was a lot of waiting around until um, about a couple of hours later when I um, went to my first therapy session. You have many different therapy sessions throughout the day in the psych ward. They're all centered around different kinds of therapy. Sometimes it's mindfulness therapy. Sometimes it's just regular talk therapy. Sometimes it's just daily check-ins. Sometimes it's art. Sometimes it's music. Sometimes it's games what have you. Um, but my first therapy session was just a nighttime sort of checkout um, where people were sharing sort of what happened throughout their day and what they want to improve on while they're here, things along those lines. And After my first talk session is when I really started to settle in and I finally felt like I could really sleep at night um, because you realize that there are people in there who genuinely want to do better. One of the sort of misconceptions I think we as a society have about psych wards is that people are in the psych ward because they're absolute menaces to society. Um, people think that you walk into a psych ward and it's just a bunch of, you know, jokers running around, you know, you know, like going, you know, society says 
that you should not blow up a hospital, but I say yes. You know, just, you know, like people like that, you know, people screaming, smearing feces on the wall, attacking people, fighting. and um, That is a misconception that really taints um, the mental hospital for people who really need it. <laughs> Um, like me and possibly many others watching this video. Um, the truth of the matter is the grand majority of people in the psych ward are, are there <laughs> to get help. And there are a lot of people who desperately need it and want it and want to change. Um, don't get me wrong, there are menaces to society in there that have been straight-jacketed and hog-tied and kept in, you know, confinement cells and stuff, but the truth is, if you are genuinely that much of a menace to society, um, and you did, you know, like, for instance, violate someone or hurt somebody really badly or end their life, um, they will put you far away from the rest of the population, believe me. Um, if you're more of a harm to yourself, they put you in, um, they allow you a lot more freedom, um, which still is very little considering your threats yourself, but, um, still in among the general population of psych ward patients, there are a lot of people who genuinely want to heal and who genuinely want to do better. So that's a very comforting feeling. Um, a lot of people there are very understanding to your issues. Um, because a lot of the issues that mentally ill people face can be very isolating in a world full of many neurotypical individuals. You know, if you start talking about suicidal thoughts among, you know, your friends, it's going to be a very jarring experience. But when you're in the psych ward, just about everybody in there is struggling with suicidal ideation and suicidal tendencies and things along those lines. So you feel a sense of belonging in that, you know, way. So that's, you know, when everything starts becoming a lot more clear. After that session, it was like a breath of fresh air. like. Um, I sort of came to terms with the fact that yes, this is where I need to be. Um, yes, this is good for me. Yes, this will help me. And after that, you just sort of surrender in a way. I sort of surrendered this idea that I was this crazy person who was a menace to society and that shouldn't be let out. And I started thinking a lot more realistically about things. I started thinking, okay, I think I'm just someone who really needs some help right now. And once you admit that you need help, that's the second you can really begin healing. I know it's definitely the moment where I started coming to a lot of realizations about my life that I'd never come to in the past. Um, after that meeting, I was given 30 minutes to call my family. Psych wards, offer you 
different amounts of time depending on where you're committed um, on the phone, but during my stay, it was like 20, 15 to 30 minutes. Um, so I called my family. I let them know that I was okay. I just sort of talked through everything and I went back into my room and I did some journaling about what I was feeling that night. Um, psych wards will give you a notebook because they're essential to a lot of, you know, the therapy they do there. Um, and I definitely took advantage of that and I really believe that you should too. It really helps you keep your head straight and sort of um, put your thoughts on paper in a place that's concrete, in a place that is recognizable, um, and in a place that's much more understandable. Um, I wrote for a little bit and they gave me my sleep meds. I was just in such a scramble from that day. I, I really did need, you know, like meds to go to sleep. Um, I didn't, it was just something about being in a new place, being in such an anxious and suicidal state. Um, I just needed to take the sleep meds. It's really the easiest way to get yourself through the night. Um, so I just took it. Um, then I woke up the next day and I started my day all again. Throughout the nights, the nurses do perform regular checks. Um, they will come into your room very frequently. You barely even notice it a lot of the time. They're not full checks. They just want to make sure that you're there and haven't escaped. So about every half hour, um, you might hear like a little creaking of your door. Um, you get used to it after a while. It, um, the first night it was kind of confusing, but I got used to it. Um, next thing you know, I wake up and I got a little workout in, um, and they started serving breakfast. Now for breakfast, they can't give you any silverware, obviously, because there are a lot of ways you can hurt yourself with silverware, <laughs> um, believe me. Um, Instead, they give you foldable little spoons. Um, they're made of paper, and the only way that you can use them is if you sort of pinch these two flaps together um, to sort of create like a spoon shape. Um, the flaps kind of come in and they kind of fold outwards into like a, a little spoon. Um, they're a little hard to use, but most of the food at the psych ward is pretty easy to eat with a spoon like that. One day they served chicken that I just couldn't eat for the life of me because, you know, if you try stabbing a cut of chicken with a paper spoon, it doesn't end well. Um, but after that, they, um, give you some time to shower, get ready for your day and all that good stuff. And then you have your first therapy session. Usually this is like a mindfulness session to start the day. Um, you know, you just talk about what you're feeling and all that other riveting therapy stuff. Um, after that, it was just a little more waiting around and 
then they started with the art activities. The art activities usually take place late morning, early afternoon, and I am a terrible artist, but it definitely is a lot of fun, um, especially considering you don't have a phone or anything like that, um, which I am grateful for, um, and you should be too if you are ever committed to a psych ward, because when you don't have anything to distract you whatsoever, the only thing you can really do is explore your mind and, you know, what's making you feel suicidal or whatever. So I am very grateful for that because when you don't have a phone or any electronics or anything like that, the only thing that really breaks up your day are the therapy sessions. So that definitely put me into much, a much more reflective state, which I'm extremely grateful for. Um, the art activities were very fun. Um, and, um, really broke things up. Um, after that, we'd have lunch, and um, I'd usually get to um, talk a little bit with the other patients, and I really recommend that you try and learn as much as you can about the other patients you were committed to the psych ward with, because It'll help you heal a lot. Um, it is good to reflect in your own mind and sort of introspect, but it's even more productive to learn that you are not alone. There are a lot of people who are struggling with the same things as you. Don't try and, you know, dig the darkest secrets out of everybody. Just be observant of the kind of personalities you witness in the psych ward. Um, there are a lot of very kind people there. There, like I said, there are some harmful people that want to fight and want to smear feces on the wall. But a lot of those people are locked up in solitary. So, um, you'll know which people you can sort of trust and which people are going to be kind and which people aren't. Um, just sort of talk to people and get a feel for them, make some friends. Um, cause when you're in the psych ward, you know, there's no hiding that you're crazy. <laughs> like, um, there's no hiding that yes, you are mentally ill. So why should you have any shame about it? Um, the psych ward can be a place to talk openly about the difficult things. What got you committed to the psych ward? You know, what kind of experiences led up to it? Things along those lines. Um, it definitely helped a lot in my case. Um, After lunch, I waited around for a few hours and around six or seven, they allow um, they allow dinner um, and family meetings. So um, these are the visiting hours where your family can come up and bring you food. Um, obviously they have to like check and see if there's any silverware in there or anything like that. But 
um, this is a very good time and it's a very relaxing way to end the night. Um, then after dinner, um, they allow you to watch TV and it was really a great way to wind down you get to hang out with some of the other patients and talk a little bit um, while experiencing a nice little taste of the outside world. Um, me and some of the other patients would watch a lot of Adventure Time and, you know, SpongeBob and whatnot. And it really was a great way of just calming me down. Um, once TV time is up, they have the closing uh, therapy session for the day where you discuss how your day went and what you intend on doing for the rest of your stay. So this is where I started to talk about reflecting on some of my more self-destructive behaviors and things along those lines, the realizations I've been coming to. Um, the psych ward gives you a lot of time to reflect on your past and sort of the things that have happened to you in your youth that might have contributed to your condition. And, you know, those adverse experiences sort of come back to you. So be ready for that. I got a lot of traumatic memories coming up for me. But when you're in the psych ward, it's such a calm and subdued place with few distractions that you're, you're able to sort of face these disturbing memories with a sense of truth and a sense of objectivity. Because if you know anything about trauma uh, you know that you aren't really able to eloquently express it until you're in a safe space to do so. That's why there's so much talk about repressed memories and stuff. A lot of people think that's a myth. It's just not what you think. Um, it's not like, you know, the memory never existed and then one day you're 22 and you know it just comes to you and you see it all again no um the thing is the adults that did bad things to you in your youth scared you into silence so you had to find a way psychologically to kind of bury that memory so you wouldn't ruin their reputation or anything like that. And you grow up just being so scared to say anything. But when you're in the psych ward, you're away from all of those people and you're in a place where you're safe and you're under good care. So a lot of those memories are gonna come up for you because you're in a safe place to remember them um, and discuss them freely that was one of the most productive parts of my stay in the psych ward was um, sort of processing all of these memories that hadn't really come to me um, until I had the time and the energy and the space to reflect on them. Um, after that therapy group, I went back into my room. Um, I took my sleeping meds and I started writing again. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but they don't let you have pens either. Um, they give you what are called flexi pens. Pretty much it's like 
um, really all it is is like a pinpoint um, and the little plastic tube with the ink. There's no, um, there's no like hard plastic cover like on a regular pen. It's just the tube with the ink, which is, or made of rubber. It's super bendy, so you can't actually stab yourself with it. <laughs> um, or like, there's no way it could physically work. Um, you gotta get really used to writing with those flexi pens because it kind of hurts after a while. But um, anyways, I was doing some writing with that and I actually got, some really good writing done. I wrote a couple of verses that I recorded and published after I got out of the mental hospital. Um, you can listen to that song in the link below, by the way. Um, little shameless promotion there, but hey. Um, and after I was done writing, I really just went to sleep again and started the whole experience again. Um, the average psych ward stay is 72 hours. 72 hours is like the minimum uh, standard stay at a mental hospital. That is if you didn't have any intentions of hurting others, you've shown good behavior, all those things. They will let you out in 72 hours. Um, so that being said, this was me waking up to my second day. Um, and it was pretty much the same. Everything happened at the same rate all the therapy groups met at the same time, all of the meals happened at the same time. Um, and by the end of the day, I was already 48 hours in. Um, this was the point where I was comfortable. I didn't really have any more of this anxiety surrounding being in the mental hospital. I wasn't pacing all over the place thinking that I was crazy and all that. Um, and you're really able to reflect in a much more calm way. Um, and it's a, it's a beautiful thing. It's a very healing experience. Um, that's really what I want to emphasize with this video. I won't waste too much time discussing, you know, what the rest of the time was like, because every day in the psych ward is sort of the same. You see the same people, people come, people go, people are committed, people are released. You know, it's just sort of a very cyclical experience. So just describing how one day in the psych ward goes really describes them all. Um, you eat, you sleep, you clean yourself up, you talk to people, um, you meet the other patients, etc. Um, but it does take you a while to come to the terms with the fact that yes, I am sick. Yes, I do deserve to be in this hospital. Yes, I need this care. Once you can admit that is when your healing truly begins. Um, once you admit that yes, you are struggling, that's when you're not afraid of being judged anymore. And you can begin to interact freely with the other patients in the hospital. And um, that's when things feel so much less isolating for you. You start to realize that no, you're not the only person in the world who has suicidal thoughts. Many people struggle with them on a day-to-day -day basis, regardless of race, religion, gender, 
economic status. It happens to everybody. Um, not everybody in the entire world, but um, it happens to all walks of life is what I'm trying to say. Um, this is the point where you can really start, you know, trusting people and trusting the other patients and just sort of surrendering yourself to the experience and surrendering, surrendering yourself to the care of the mental health professionals. And that's really why I wanted to make this video because I don't want anybody else to think that they're crazy just because they went to the mental hospital. It's no different than going to a physical health hospital. You are sick. Sometimes there are situations that get you into the mental hospital that are life or death. The mental hospital can save your life. It did for me. I know that for a fact. I would not be here if it weren't for the mental hospital. So please don't think that you're crazy for needing to go to a psych ward, needing to go to a mental hospital. You should not care what people think. Um, don't feel ashamed to say that you've been to the psych ward. I have been to the psych ward and I'm not ashamed to admit it. I was a sick person and the psych ward offered the care that I needed to keep me alive. I really hope that this video helped you. I really hope that this video made you feel less alone in what you might be going through. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Harrison. Peace.